हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू द न्यू सेशन ऑफ कार्डियोवास्कुलर फिजियोलॉजी ईसीजी इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल सी अबाउट हाउ द बेसिस ऑफ जनरेशन ऑफ ईसीजी हाउ द नॉर्मल ईसीजी इज बीइंग जनरेटेड व्हाट इज ईसीजी एंड व्हाट कॉजेस द जनरेशन ऑफ द ईसीजी व्हाट इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ ईसीजी ईसीजी इज अ रिकॉर्ड ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिकल एक्टिविटी ऑफ द हार्ट दैट मींस देयर इज सम इलेक्ट्रिकल एक्टिविटीज दैट इज द स्प्रेड ऑफ द एक्शन पोटेंशियल इज गोइंग ऑन इन द हार्ट एंड this spread of the action potential will generate some electrical potentials in our body and this can be recorded with the help of a suitable electrodes so the record of electrical activity of the heart from the surface of the body is called as ecg what is the normal ecg as you can see this is the picture of the normal ecg these are the waves this is called as p wave then is followed by the qrs complex and then followed by the t wave p wave represents atrial depolarization qrs complex represent ventricular depolarization whereas the t wave represents ventricular repolarization the wave of atrial repolarization is suppressed in a large qrs complex next important thing you have to remember is that the p r interval now what do you mean by p r interval starting of p to starting of qrs complex so this will be from exactly from this point to this point that will be called as pr interval then the next important segment is the st segment what is st segment end of qrs to starting of t is called as st segment a short information about this nomenclature if it is a tall big wave so what is q wave the first negative wave followed by the that is the p wave is called as q wave sometimes the q wave might be absent right then what is the r wave the first positive wave followed by the p wave is called as r wave what is s wave the second negative wave followed by the p wave is called as s wave when to write this capital when to write this small is depending upon the amplitude if a high amplitude wave can be written as a capital whereas a small amplitude wave can be written as a small letters now this this is this can be called as a isoelectric or the baseline or the zero potential line these are the one which are the positive waves these are the one which are the negative waves which denote the potential right now we will say about why what is exactly this ecg how is being this generated what is the basis of generation of the p qrs complex and the t wave for this you have to remember is that you have to remember the conduction pathway as we have seen in the conduction pathway the normally the action potential is generated in the sa node from the sa node it will spread to complete atria and then it will go to the av node then from the av node it will go to the bundle of his from the bundle of his it will go to the right and left ventral branch then from here it could purkinje fibers then it will go to the spread in the endocardium and then the epicardium and the last portion is the base of the heart that is the last portion to get depolarized now the spread of the heart action potential in the heart in this typical manner that is the basis of generation of the ecg how does it will generate the ecg just i will draw the figure so that you can understand it in a better way suppose these are two atria right atria and the left atria and this is the sa node action potential will be generated in the sa node now imagine the first situation where complete atria is in the resting stage when it is in the resting stage that means what the membrane is polarized membrane is polarized means inside the muscle fiber it is negative outside it is positive so what you will see that there is a always some positivity that means we are mainly concerned only with the extracellular fluid charge or the outside charge so how much is the outside charge everywhere it is positive right so this is the positive charge which is present outside of the all the cardiac muscle fiber in the atria now let's say the action potential has started in the sa node and it is spreading to the some part of the atria surrounding it now what do you mean by the action potential has started action potential has got the phases depolarization and the repolarization so initially what will occur depolarization depolarization means what will happen there is a 
flow of the that is the sum positive charge will flow from that is flow from outside to inside either it can be calcium or it can be sodium a positive charge is going inside so what will happen now the outside charge will become slightly negative compared to the rest of the area or the rest of the muscle fibers which are still in the resting stage they will be having the outside positive charge but since the process of depolarization is going on in this fibers now what will happen some positive charge will go inside so some positive charge goes inside means what will happen to the outside charge it will become negative in relation to this other fibers which are still in the resting state so what will happen now this this positive will become negative so this charge will become negative now only in the extracellular fluid compartment there is some negative pole this will act as a negative pole this will act as a positive pole what will happen if there is some negative point and if there is some positive point current will start flowing between them so the flow of the current will generate the electrical vector it will generate the electrical vector so the current will start flowing and the vector will be generated which will be having the direction this way it's towards the positive so what you are understood now flow of the action potential or spread of the action potential will generate electrical vectors will generate the electrical vector the size and the magnitude and the direction of this electrical vector will not remain constant it will be changing why it, why it will be changing imagine suppose now the action potential has spread it in half of the atria and half of the atria is still in the resting phase so what will happen if the depolarization has occurred in half, half of the atria this charge will become negative so now the number of the negative charges they will go on increasing so this charge will again become negative and now we can see that half of the atria has depolarized half is still in the resting phase so there are equal number of positive and the negative charges if there is equal number of positive and negative charges the magnitude of this electrical vector will increase so now this magnitude of the electrical vector will increase because of that more current will flow now what will happen to the direction also the direction will also change suppose let's say that 3/4 of the atria it has got depolarized now and the 1/4 is in the resting state so now more negative charges are there here and only 1/4 has remained which is still in the resting state now negative charges are more but the positive charges are less so the magnitude of the electrical vector would should decrease but the direction of the electrical vector will also change here so the magnitude will decrease but the direction will be in this way towards the positive so what the point i want to emphasize spread of the action potential will generate electrical vectors because some part will be in the negative phase some part will be in the positive phase the extracellular fluid compartment the number of such vectors will be generated but the summated activity of the those vectors that will be seen the next thing you have to remember is that the magnitude and the direction of this electrical vector is going to change right now if the electrical vector is generated since our body is a volume conductor what do you mean by our body is a volume conductor that our body has can conduct the electric, electricity easily so since our body act, will act as a volume conductor this electrical vector will have electrical field around it it will have the electrical field around it so if i want to draw the figure of the electrical field now this is the electrical vector and this is the electrical field around it what do you mean by electrical field around it because of this electrical vector some current is flowing from this point to this point because of that what you will have some potentials will be there at the different points and what is the strength of that potential will depend upon this electrical field so there will be some potential at this point there will be some potential at this point and that value will be different depending upon the electrical field where where it is located now what we do we connect this points over in the body with the help of the electrode 
So if I record, if I attach a positive electrode here, if I attach a negative electrode here, and if I connect to a voltmeter, what I will record is some voltage. What I will record is some voltage in this voltmeter. Now again I will revise the stress for you. Spread of the action potential will generate electrical vectors. Number of such vectors are generated. A summated activity of the electrical vectors can be recorded if we connect the suitable electrodes over the body surface. Next point you have to remember is that the action potential is spreading. So the direction at the magnitude of the electrical vector will go on changing. So what will happen to this voltage? This voltage will also not remain constant. This voltage will also going on changing. And change in this voltage is nothing but what we record as the ECG. So what is ECG? Whenever the action potential is spreading in the atria, this atrial voltage changes that are recorded, that will be recorded as the P wave. Whenever the action potential is spreading in ventricle, that changes in the action potential, that changes in the electrical vector which are recorded, that will be called as the QRS complex. And whenever the ventricle is getting repolarized, that time also electrical vectors are generated and we record the voltage changes that will be recorded as the T view. Right? So, this is the basis of the generation of the ECG. Now, since our body is a volume conductor, what we do is that, what is the property of a volume conductor? You might have heard about the, in physics about the Ithone's law or Ithone's triangle. What is this Ithone's triangle? That if an electrical vector is placed in the center of a volume conductor and if we draw an isosceles triangle around it. Now this is the, let's say that, this is the center of the, where we have placed the electrical vector. And if we are drawing an isosceles triangle around it, then the summation of potentials at these three points is equal to zero. So what is an Ithone's triangle or Ithone's law? If an electrical vector is placed in a volume conductor and if I draw an isosceles triangle around it, then the summation of the voltage at the three angles of the isosceles triangle is equal to zero. So, which are these three points in our body? These three points in our body are the, just here is the right arm, then here is the left arm and the point about, above the sympiasis pubis. So, that will act as the third point. If we connect this with the electrodes, these three points, and if we measure the voltage together of these three points, we will record the zero potential voltage. So, we have got a positive electrode. We have got the negative electrode. Now, exactly how much will the voltage recorded by the electrical vector? It all depends upon the physics. The projection of the electrical vector on the axis of the particular lead, that will be the voltage that will be recorded. I will try to explain this with the help of the figure again. Now, just concentrate here. This is the vector. Let's say, this is the vector which has been generated when the, when the action potential was spreading. And now I have got the electrodes in my hand. One is a positive electrode, another is the negative electrode. Positive electrode, I, I place it over this point. The negative electrode, I place it over this point. It's on me, where I can place it. Now, exactly how much will be the voltage that will be recorded because of these electrodes, it all depends upon the projection of this vector on this lead. We will call this as a lead now, that is uh, which has got a positive electrode, which has got the negative electrode. And the direction of the lead is from the negative towards the positive. So this is the direction of the lead or the axis of the lead, we will call it as. Right? So now what I have to do is that, I have to place this vector I have to put this vector over this zero point. So if I just shift this vector parallelly and put it over this zero point now, so this is my vector. And now I have to calculate the projection of this vector on this lead. So if I calculate the projection, if I draw a perpendicular now, so approximately the voltage, that means the recorded, it will be equal to plus one millivolt. So that much volt, that much will be the voltage that is recorded. So what you understood is that how much voltage will be recorded in a particular lead? Lead means what? The direction of the that, the particular which has got the positive electrode, which has got the negative electrode, and it's placed in a particular direction. 
So how much voltage I will require in a particular lead? It will depend upon the axis of the lead. That means the direction and the resultant vector on its projection of the that vector. Right? So this is the basis of this. One important thing you can recall is that if there is a vector which has got this direction, that means towards the negative electrode. Now how much will be the voltage that will be recorded? Here in this case it was plus 1 millivolt. That means a positive voltage will be recorded. But if the my vector is in this way towards the negative electrode, so what if I put this electrode here and if I draw the projection, what voltage I will record is the minus 1 millivolt. So simple rule you have to remember. If a vector is directed towards the positive electrode, I will record a positive voltage. If a vector is directed towards the negative electrode, I will record a negative voltage. Right? Now, we have got the three points over the Ithorn's triangle. And now our aim is to record the electrical activity of this heart whenever the action potential is spreading, to record the electrical activity of heart through number of the axis or through different electrodes. Now, as you know that, if we take this Ithorn's triangle, if we put a positive electrode here and a negative electrode here and if we record the voltage difference between these two points what the lead I will have is the lead 1 so this is my lead 1 which is having the positive electrode over the left arm and the negative electrode over the right arm this is the standardization by the standardization then what is lead 2? lead 2 is 1 where a negative electrode is again kept over the right arm and a positive electrode is kept over the left leg or the just point above the symphysis pubis. So that will be called as the lead 2. What is lead 3? Lead 3 is one where a negative electrode is kept over the left arm and a positive electrode is kept over the point above the symphysis pubis. So that will construct my lead 3. These are called as bipolar leads. So what are these leads? Lead 1, 2 and 3. These are the bipolar leads because they are recording the differences between the voltage at two points. So these are called as bipolar leads. Now you can ask a question that why we choose always the point about the symphysis pubis is positive in all the cases whereas the right arm is the one which is negative in all the cases. So why does it happen? Because this is the standardization and when they did the standardization, they placed the electrode in such a way. You have to remember that if a, normally the direction, the spread of the action potential is in this way, in the heart. So the vector will be maximally directed towards the positive side, that means towards the leg. So if I keep a positive electrode here, I will record more and more positive waves. I will record more and more positive waves. But if I keep a positive electrode in this way, then in my ECG I will get more and more negative waves. So for standardization, if a choice is given between the arm and the leg, I should put the positive electrode towards the leg. Right? So as you can see here, in this lead 3, if a choice is given, I will put negative electrode here and a positive electrode. Here. But you might have seen that in the record of the ECG that we don't actually attach the electrodes over this arm or this. What we do, we attach the electrodes through this limbs. Now, how this can be useful? Or is this the right way then? Yes, this is the right way because the, even if we attach the electrode over the shoulder here or even we attach the electrode towards here over the limb on the wrist, since these arms or uh, these hands are the extensions of our body cavity, so whatever the voltage changes here will be reflected in this case also. Here, same, will be the same here. So therefore the voltage will not differ much. Right? So that's why and it is very convenient to attach the electrodes over the limb here. So that's why we attach the electrodes not on the shoulder here, but we attach the electrodes over the wrist in the right arm and the, over the left wrist and we attach the electrode to the left leg. Here with this we come to the end of this lecture, rest of the things we will see it in the next lecture.